foundation myth of the European Union is that it was created after the Second World War in order to prevent war between France and Germany. In a Christian Western society, the Schumann principle that peace is made by equality between vanquished and victor is accepted as good. But when we look at Europe today, do we see real peace? Do we see peaceful relationships with European unions near abroad? Russia, Middle East and Africa? Or do we see mounting hostility? And do we see peace within Europe? Or are the relationships described as oppressive? even more accurately described as neo-colonial. People make a lot of criticism of the European Union, but when it comes down to it, people would tolerate no end of regulations about bananas if they have peace in Europe. The EU had no business to get involved in that conflict. The idea that the European Union is all that prevents us from killing one another on the battlefields in Europe is now ridiculous. You're conquering a country by economic means. And that cannot be a basis for peace in Europe. I am Stephanie Christoffi, and in this film, I will be looking at this claim and asking if it is all realistic in the 21st century. World War II was, as the name suggests, not just a European war, it was a world war. Japan was a major enemy, but peace was established without the EU there, nor any model even remotely similar. Since the war, Japan has played major part in world economic, you might say Western development. These cameras are Japanese, not European. The major belligerents in World War II were Britain, USA, USSR, Japan, Germany, China. We were left with a Cold War, an unresolved conflict between the West and USSR. France had not really been a part of World War II because France was not Hitler's main enemy. Even in World War I, the Schlieffen Plan Germany's attack on France was a strategic necessity and the Kaiser said that this is the final conflict between the Teutons and the Slavs. For Hitler, it was a conflict with the Slav, with Russia. In 1950, making peace with Germany or France was the easy bit. The real division in Europe through history has been between German Europe of the Teutons including Catholic Poland and Orthodox Russian Slav Europe. The only war Britain has actually ever fought against Russia, as they were usually allies, was the Crimean War, which was started by France to support Catholic monks squabbling for some relics in Jerusalem, cared for by Orthodox monks. Today there's an opportunity to heal this rift in Europe. So why is the European Union perpetuating this division? Over the last four or five years, it's continued with its hostility towards Russia. Christina Oyland was Foreign Minister of Estonia who negotiated the accession to the EU. Now, if I recall my campaigning, then uh, uh, my, my arguments were uh, very much uh, linked to the security. She admits that only the fear and dislike of Russia enabled the EU to win those referendums. There's several factors at work. One is the fear of Russia, and the European uses that to keep control over its eastern provinces. Other factors are countries such as Poland. They traditionally had territory to the east of what we now think of as Poland, and they want more influence over their former territories. And talented statesmen such as Radek Sikorsky have had a strong input into the development of European Union policy and its drive eastwards. Then, of course, there's multinational companies large agricultural businesses, agribusinesses, and they want to make sure that there's a government in power in certain countries, such as Ukraine, that understands the concerns of these Western companies. And combining all that with the imperial folly of the European Union, it has, after all, been likened to an empire. 
and the fact that they're developing an EU army. It's quickly militarising and that's all for a purpose. So we have a European Union that's driving ever eastwards to expand its power. There is one thing every single American Defence Secretary and President up until Obama have asked of us. Do not, under any circumstances, create two military decision points in Europe. Drangnak Austin. Maybe a bit of an exaggeration. But the EU was once famously described as being like a bicycle. If it does not keep moving forward, it falls over. We have to go back in history to 1948-49 when the Russians blockaded Berlin and that blockade was lifted by the United States and the United Kingdom by an airlift. They even airlifted coal to Berlin and had that not been successful it's doubtful whether Germany in its present form uh, would have still existed so that the real peacemongers um, in Europe are NATO and not the European Union. Uh, All the claims that are being made that the EU has kept the peace in Europe are completely false and nothing must be done to undermine uh, NATO, which is the true protector of European peace and security. Some claim that the European Union has, has, has promoted peace in the European, across Europe, and I don't think that's true. Um, the West, Western Europe was united uh, against the East in, in the Cold War. Now the Cold War is over and other countries have joined uh, and become more democratic European countries. But at the same time, I don't think that's um, brought about peace. Peace came as we are, nobody in Europe wanted a, a, another world war after the horrors of the 20th century. So I just think it's a non sequitur. Um, you know, uh, correlation is not causation. Uh, and indeed, the tensions, as I say, are starting to rise between Europe, countries within the European Union, which I think is very, uh, is cause for some, some unease, certainly in my case. Uh, and I think, you know, getting rid of um, the euro, allowing countries to be a bit more free in the way they manage their economies would actually promote easy relations between the European countries, uh, not the the, the rising tensions at the moment. The European Union claims that if Britain and other countries were to leave the European Union, this would be resulting into a new world war. What is your opinion? I think that's a hysterical and ridiculous claim. The idea that the European Union is all that prevents us from killing one another on the battlefields in Europe is now ridiculous. Clearly the continent is not in conflict at the moment, but tensions I think have been rising in the European Union um, because of the the insistence on on governments that that when countries have bailouts they have to observe very harsh conditions. And this has caused terrible stress and and social pain in places like Greece and, and, and Portugal and other countries we've seen. Uh, falling living standards, high unemployment, and indeed quite a lot of emigration to, uh, to, to find work. And all of this is being caused by, I think, the tensions inside the European Union, particularly inside the Eurozone because of the Euro. It's true that the EU was born out of the horror of the Second World War, and p- particularly amongst people on the Franco-German border who had seen two world wars. But so much has changed since then. Between the internet and travel, We've become friends with people right around the world and not just in the European Union. And the idea that we would today have governments seeking to advance themselves by violent means is really faintly ridiculous. It's NATO that's kept the peace in Europe since the war against external threats. And the old ideas which led to economic nationalism as war, well, they've been suppressed. And if anything today, what the European Union does is raise those old economic nationalisms to the level of a continent. Until the last few years, the EU presented itself as a balanced tool, if not a rival, of the USA. But now, especially when we look at recent crises, we see the EU really following the line laid down by the USA. It even looks like a client of the USA and of a bizarre neocon desire to recreate the Cold War. It's very true that in, in the Ukraine, Uh, there was opposition to the elected president. Um, But that was no call for the United States and the EU to get involved and to encourage the rebels.
the president was properly elected. And uh, as in all countries, there is an opposition, and the opposition um, gathered together and indeed caused shooting and what became a rebellion. But the United States and, and the EU had no business to get involved in that conflict and on one side of it. And they actually encouraged the rebels in Ukraine um, in, to overthrow the elected president. When countries have bailouts, they have to observe very harsh conditions. And this has caused terrible stress and, and social pain in places like Greece and, and, and Portugal and other countries. We've seen uh, falling living standards, high unemployment, and indeed quite a lot of emigration to, to, to find work. He had a movement in the squares in 2011, 2012, which culminated in the election of a new government in 2015. Um, this government tried to renegotiate uh, Greece's bailout agreements and its debt. When the European Union refused to negotiate, Greece held a referendum um, in order to decide whether it accepted the deal the European Union offered or not. The Greek people voted no, but not only did not the European Union listen to the Greek people's verdict in the referendum, but it forced an even worse deal than what the Greek people turned down. And all the elected, all the mandate with which the government was elected in 2015 went out of the window. So what you're having is, you know, war by economic means. When you don't respect a democratic um, mandate of the people, when you overturn referendum results on governments, it is war by economic means. You're conquering a country by economic means. And that cannot be a basis for peace in Europe. Pax Vobiscum, as we say in the West, Stephanie, peace be with you. The peace of God is not a worldly thing, but of the kingdom of God. Jesus did not come to liberate Israel from the Roman Empire, after all. But still, in Christian Europe, there has always been the idea that peace on earth means more than just not being in a shooting war. Peace is about a relationship between people. It's about a state of being within ourselves. We call it a spiritual thing, but it must inform the political ideal. A good ruler enables their people to be at peace, to live in justice and in wealth. But when the ruler puts an ideology before their people, they are lost just as the EU has put the survival of the Euro above the happiness and well-being of its people. It's a betrayal of everything that has ever been good in European civilization. The EU was once famously described as being like a bicycle. If it does not keep moving forward, it falls over. It needs, like the Roman Empire, new conquests. Albania, Montenegro, Turkey, Serbia, where they brought so much peace. Peace.